Hello there guys, welcome to another Train Sim Classic video. Today we're looking at the General Electric E60 by Repo. The latest uh, add-on by Repo solely since, gosh, the M2? What was it? M3? What? One of, one of the M's, the old electric cans. Anyway, that was some years ago. These were made and finally released today on the 8th of December, 2022. Uh, and I think the last thing he did was actually a commission for Dovetail, which was uh, for the AC-44s that came with uh, Tehachapi, which weren't uh, all that great. But anyway, with this pack, you're going to get the GE E60, some new barrels or AM fleets off to the right there, uh, which of course we'll all take a look at in due time. But you're going to get Amtrak, uh, and NJT with running and cold and dark options. You're going to get four scenarios for the Northeast Corridor, New York, New Haven, and New Jersey Transit's uh, Morristown line. Uh, of course, you're going to get new, and they are new, and fleets in the uh, Phase 3 livery with Cafe Car. Um, some rebuilt E60s, which these are. These aren't the originals. These are the rebuilt E60s. We'll go over that as well. And these things had a funky horn. They had like a Nathan... PO one two three five six seven eight nine ten horn, so we'll see how that sounds. Uh, but the Amfleet Cafe car was uh, was apparently modeled according to the Steam page. It's got some nice interior shots um, and all that good stuff. But uh, anyway, we're gonna take a look at these. The model itself looks pretty darn good, to to be honest. Um, you know, as far as the texturing and the weathering, it looks okay. It looks a little bit washed out. Um, a, a tiny, tiny bit, just fairly weathered, uh, which they would be. These things were old uh, by the time they got rid of them um, and when they stopped running overall. But, I mean, you know, compared to stuff in the past with Train Sim Classic, they look pretty darn good, uh, if I'm honest. They look on par with, with Repo, and as a lot of you know, Repo is created some very decent stuff over the years uh long time third party dev for train some classic uh making the likes of the gp20 uh the baldwin centipede and stuff like that so he is he has definitely been one of the better ones but uh yeah these look pretty good you're gonna get amtrak and njt you're gonna get the scenarios too of course and uh yeah we'll just take a look at these things all right, so as with part of the pack, we get some new AM fleets, some barrels. Uh, so AM fleets were essentially single level uh, inner city coaches built by the Bud Company for Amtrak in the 70s, uh, which the design was based on the old Metro liners, which the E60 also replaced. So it was kind of uh, one in the same or hand in hand, if you will, there. Um, they delivered over about 600 total. Uh, between 75 and 77, they were the Amfleet 1s, which were essentially for shirt, short service. Shirt service. No shoes, no shirt, no service. And then uh, 80 to 83, the Amfleet 2s were for uh, longer service. Uh, they are, of course, stainless steel car body, uh, included cafe, club car, lounge cars. Uh, and they essentially ended up only with business class and a diner light, if you will, which is uh, still a cafe. So what I have here sat side by side. And oh, by the way, sorry, this pack is $20, so it's $19.99. Completely skimmed over that. Uh, so these old barrels here are from long, long ago in medieval times uh, when these came out. And they've been in many packs. Uh, I feel like the latest one that came in was probably the Washington Washington Baltimore route, which we are currently on. That's Washington D.C. behind us yonder. Uh, but they were always a bit off in the uh, in the model department. They were short and short, so they weren't very tall and they weren't very long. So I, I guess you'd call that short and short. I'm not really sure, but they never looked that great either. I mean, these things are freaking stainless steel. Uh, the paint was never that great. It's phase 4 on this one. And, uh, yeah, just very blurry and just kind of meh. A lot of people did a lot of really nice uh, mods to these, but the shape of them was still very incorrect. So I'll try and get down level here as much as I can. 
you can definitely see the difference. Even in the undercarriage, the bogies, the wheels of trucks down there, the cabling. Look how much better the cabling looks for the uh, connection between the cars. Hell, the door back here, the lights are actually uh, lit. Uh, they just, they look like stainless steel. They're, they're, they're a lot better looking. And, and just right off the bat, I haven't even looked at the E60. I think this, this is probably almost already worth it because of the new Amfleets. I mean, these things are all over the, the Northeast Corridor and the Midwest, um, you know, on passenger trains. So they're very usable, if you will. So I think almost, you know, th at least worth half the price of the pack at the very least haven't even looked inside of these yet but they are new so you can tell it's it's kind of hard to tell these this is kind of gapped out a little bit but the uh the the newer ones on the left there are a little bit taller i'll try and line up with the roof of this one here so there you go so i'm kind of on the uh the door liner here the gangway and you can tell that over there is much higher we'll scooch over here and do the same and just a lot more detailed. And then this is the most noticeable part. So if we get up in uh, helichopper view, look at the length. So I put these nose to nose, cafe, cafe, coach, coach. And the length, that's a good 10, 8, 10 feet more, you know, with, with two of them butted up like that. Now, I don't know if these are 100% accurate with, you know, length and in terms of the simulator itself, but they are much larger and they look a lot better. The top is weathered. They actually look like they got a stainless steel sheen, but it's not, you know, over the top to where it's, you know, blinding you and, and murdering your eyesight uh, little by little. The textures are definitely better than the older ones. Um, it, it, the, the coloring could be better. You can kind of see the weird blocking in there. I don't know if that has anything to do with the Alpha Channel. I'm not that technically astute, as a lot of you know, within Train Sim Classic. Uh, but you can definitely see some kind of weirdness going on there. Uh, but the color is a little bit faded, not to be super, you know, nitpicky. Uh, but the stainless steel overall looks good. They look, uh, they look pretty weathered. These... I'm surprised with these. I, I thought for sure these were going to be these, just maybe repainted, and they are not. I, I don't know where he got the model, if he just made the model, or where he got the specs, or whatnot, but they uh, they are definitely different. I mean, look at the trucks down here in the bogies. The brake pads on the shoes, the spring. Like, that's, <laughs> that's night and day compared to that. Look at that. Look at that. That's Minecraft. That's Minecraft right there. And then look at that. So this is uh oh, even down here on the metal the uh the the, the 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 welding the welded bits all down here look at that even some of that that you ain't got none of that over here that's just low res central and these brake pads these brake shoes look really nice too the whole mechanism behind there and the bolts and everything those look pretty good now I know within Train Sim there are a lot of uh, Northeast Corridor foamers that are probably going to pick these things apart. I think I know just enough to get by as far as the Northeast Corridor and just passenger stuff in general because we don't really have passenger trains down here in the south. It's, uh, it's an exotic thing down here where I live. So I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are going to find, you know, things. Uh, and as usual, if you do, let me know in the comments down below. But uh, just looking at these side by side, uh, even where the numbers are, up here like that number plate thing there versus this one just the rivets on the car body alone or the ribbed not the rivets the rib bits versus like that night and day night and day check out the windows trim on the windows looks pretty good this guy's kind of creepy um Amtrak looks all right. It's not the sharpest logo, but it looks pretty good. The numbering looks very nice as well I mean numbering is hard Apparently not to get to look sharp, as I've found over the years. Um, you got the equipment down below. Let's see, we got battery box, uh, voltage, probably some HVAC kind of stuff. Little generator down there, probably for the AC. And we'll look at this one here. So that one versus that one. That's a definite upgrade. You've got like a warning sticker on that one, on this one. It's not even legible. It's, uh, and here's, you know, the, the power boxes and all that good stuff. The, uh, the plumbing versus, like, these. These look pretty damn good. Even got a refrigerant decal on there. 
I mean, you can just about read that thing. It looks, it looks pretty legit. It looks pretty legit. -y. Look at the inside. The couplers look okay. I should have looked at that. I don't know if they are the exact correct couplers. I mean, they're they're not the best in the biz as far as train some classic. Obviously, I mean, hell, there's there's modders out there that have made better looking couplers, but uh, they don't look bad. They're a decent color. They're not just a flat slate gray like we often see on Steam store stuff. But uh, even the hoses, man, and the uh, the cable connections down here. Look at this. First is this. So this is a this is a huge upgrade. I see some some strong chain game going on up in there. Bringing the chain game. Looks very nice. Oh, and see, that's what I'm talking about. Look at this coupler here. I didn't even look at this one like a ding dong. Versus that one. So a lot, a lot, a lot more natural. Even the vents up here. And the grills on those. Versus these over here. There's not even, it's not even a thing. It's just like a solid color. So, yeah, like I'm, you know, I'm not really that big into passenger stuff, but these alone are getting me pretty excited for this pack. Um, if, if I'm honest, they look pretty nice. Of course, the interior has been done up as well, and uh, we will, of course, take a look at that momentarily. All right. In the Chonkas Among Us. The GE E60, quintessentially, hands down, unarguably one of the coolest American passenger electric locomotives to ever run our rails over here. These things were cool as hell, but they didn't start their life out as uh, passenger haulers. And so for that very reason, I'll spiel a little bit here just for those that may not know a lot about these. I still don't know a whole hell of a lot about these. But of course, General Electric built E60. Um, they essentially built a ton of these. Well, not a ton. We'll say a, a, a gaggle of these, uh, which are six axle giants, obviously. Uh, electric locos pushing 6,000 horsepower, which is quite a bit. They built them between 1972 and uh, 1983. And there were variants for freight and passenger. They started out as freight and then went to passenger. But uh, they were initially freight to begin with. Uh, they were built for USA and Mexico, used in both countries. Uh, but they were initially designed for the Black Mesa and Lake Powell Railroad, which is uh, strictly a coal hauling line in Arizona back in the 70s. Uh, the same year, the GE design uh, changed a little bit to adapt them for high speed on the Northeast Corridor for passenger hauling because Amtrak was needing some new equipment. Uh, the the Metro Liner, you know, they were cool, but they were pieces of crap, uh, marred by technical problems and service and mechanical problems all the time, and they just needed to replace something. So they came up with these, and they designed these. So they took the freight locomotive, turned it into a, uh, a passenger locomotive, essentially, uh, Mexico also had them on the NDEM, which is the uh, Mexican National Railway, and they were the largest customer of these things. They owned about 40 of them almost, but uh, 73 were built overall, like I said, between 1972 and 1983. They are, of course, Coco. I'm in love with the Coco. Uh, they, let's see, they weighed about 380,000 pounds to 426,000 pounds for the freight haulers. They were 11 kilovolt, 25 hertz AC, 12 and a half kilovolt, 60 hertz AC, 25 kilovolt, 60 hertz AC, 50 kilovolt, 60 hertz AC, and on and on and on for the different railroads and, and different necessities and all that via pantograph, of course, as you can see here in front of us. Um, and they had six GE 780B or 752AF traction motors, so either or. Uh, now, some of them had a steam boiler in them, the E60CP, and then some of them had HEP, which is head in power, as a lot of you know, uh, on the E60CH and the MA variant, which uh, were later adapted to these um, pretty much for, you know, passenger service in the, in the northeast of the U.S. Uh, they had air and dynamic brakes, cab signaling, ATC, um, yada, yada, but... Uh, I think they were finally retired in like the late 90s for the NJT variant here, and then uh, I think about 2003 for Amtrak. 
So there's a lot of information about these. Uh, General Electric basically changed for the passenger variant from the freight usage, uh, which included a lighter weight. So they removed some of the weight. Uh, the initial ones were the 400 something thousand pounds. The, the passenger variant, they sat at about 387,000 pounds because I think the freight variants had ballast in them, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and they were geared differently at 6838. Uh, for essentially 120 mile an hour max, though they didn't really do that well there, but we'll get to that. Uh, they had lower tractive efforts starting at 75,000 uh, pounds and about 34,000 pounds continuous. Uh, so Amtrak got them and supplied heat via steam heat, cars, and HEP eventually. They didn't always start with HEP. Uh, ergo the, the E60CP, which was steam gen, and the E60CH, which was uh, head in power. Uh, both obviously had cabs and panos um, at each end. Um, let's see, Amtrak ordered about 26 in, uh, I think it was about 1973, and that, of course, was to replace the old-ass GG1s, which are very cool and, you know, neat old electric locos, but they weren't doing so hot uh, by this time. And, of course, the Metro Liners as well. Uh, the first one to use Amtrak's phase two paint scheme as well was this loco the first engine to use the phase two back in 1974 uh, now these things were known to not do so hot when they first started using them on the northeast corridor they kind of yawed because they put down so much power and they were so big and still so heavy that they kind of they kind of went all cockeyed when they when they take off from a station or whatnot getting up to speed and they would damage a lot of rails uh, in fact, there was a massive incident in Maryland uh, involving one of these things, and the National Service Transportation Board, or whatever the hell it's called, essentially found that it was related to the the, the bogies or, or something like that. I don't know the exact details. So by then, the speeds were restricted to 85, so no longer 120 mile an hour, uh, but the problems kind of persisted for a little while, um, at which point they started building the AEM-7, or the toaster. All right, almost done monologuing. So essentially with the arrival of the AEM-7, Amtrak sold uh, some of theirs to the Navajo Mine Railroad. Uh, New Jersey Transit, which we have here in front of us on the right, bought 10 of them. Uh, they were by then named E60CHs, which did have the head and power, obviously, not the steam gen. And they used them on the coastline uh, down in Jersey. The, uh, the E60s remained with Amtrak um, for the most part. The ones they didn't sell anyway, they were rebuilt. A lot of them fitted with HEP. They were given new numbers. They were called the E60MA. Uh, well, I think, I'm pretty sure NJT still called them E60CH. Uh, and they were re-geared for 90. So they could do 90, not 120, not 85, but 90. Uh, and they were basically just used on heavy, long-distance trains uh, for push and pull configuration uh with with keystone trains and uh yeah that's pretty much it and i think they finally retired in about 2003 now there's a lot of numbers and uh i'm i'm not gonna really get into the numbers because they renumbered them the the steam versions had different numbers hep versions had different numbers so on and so forth i'm assuming you got them right i'm not gonna get super duper into that but let's go ahead and look at them i'll go ahead and stop jaw flapping they look pretty good i mean they look about on par like i said for a lot of the repo stuff um you know the the textures and, and the coloring itself aren't the crispiest in the world but you know with a lot of the stuff that we get nowadays that's released on the steam store uh you know via dovetail this is definitely in the upper echelon, uh, if, if I'm honest. You can see a bit of, like, rusting and peeling down there on that plate. What is that? Did they have the anti-lift plate things back then? I don't think they did. I think that's just a part of the body for whatever reason. Um, but, yeah, some of the textures do look a little muddy and just low res like this right here. But then there's little model bits that look good, like this key lock here on that flap. Um, you know, you can see some, some bolts and nuts here on the steps. Uh, I think the MU bits and the hoses look pretty good as well as the, uh, the, the coupler itself. The, the trucks and bogies, um, 
You know, they look okay. I don't think they look as good as the Amfleets, oddly. Um, you know, but they look all right. They, they got a little bit of, like, shine to them, which is kind of funny to see on stuff like that because it's so gritty down there, you know. Um, and I think these things, I saw someone mention they had a bell on each end under the cab somewhere or something one time. So let's see if we can find that dang thing. It's in like a weird spot. There's our uh, compressor back there. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Might just be in a funky place. So I have these set in the cold and dark fi configuration. Uh, they come with the lights on, which sadly are, <laughs> you know, they're that they're that crazy flare. It's almost like a lemonade PP yellow. Um, whereas you know the markers are a totally different color. Um, you know, but at least they're not like. Oh, I'll just throw one name out there. At least they're not like. DTM or, or TBT as far as developers in there, you know, stabbing your retinas out with daggers uh, with, with how they look as far as the color and the flare. They are a bit overkill. Um, I don't know if you can turn the flare off and they still light up. Sometimes if you turn flares off in the settings, uh, you may not have lights at all, which in some cases I'm totally fine with just to avoid how these flares look, but they're not the best. Um, the numbers look okay. And the backlit numbers, honestly, they look pretty good. They got that bit where it looks like there's an actual bulb or two back here, and then the top is kind of faded out where not a lot of light is passing through the number itself. Those look pretty good, honestly. Um, not not too shabby. Not too shabby. Look at the bits up top here. This horn, again, I don't know what the hell it is. Nathan P.O. something. I, I know they had a weird horn. It's got a weird sound. Um... I'm not sure what that model's supposed to be. It is a funky looking model, the way the, the bells are arranged. I don't know, but I, I'm, not, I'm not a big horn guy. Like, I love the way they sound, but I couldn't tell you each, you know, each phase of, like, a particular horn that came out a particular year that a particular railroad used and stuff like that. Wish I knew, but I don't. Sorry. Um, top looks okay. It's got a lot of rust, um, you know, which it would be in the northeast. All the snow and the salt and just sea air running on the east coast so you got salt in the air then we got all the electrical bits up top which i know probably less about this stuff than uh, steam engines but it looks confusing and uh very very detailed i guess some of the textures aren't looking super hot like on this uh we'll call it a uh transistor yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the hell is that called. Sorry. The the pantographs look pretty good, though. They are actually contacting the lineup here. Of course, again, we're on the Washington, Baltimore, as, as far as the route goes. Uh, the little rubber bits look okay. Um, I mean, you're not really going to spend a whole lot of time up here, so I don't, I don't think the textures and the shading and all that needs to be tippity-tippity-top up here. Um, but, you know, they look okay. They definitely look uh, better than a lot of the stuff we see that gets released on the Steam Store. That is for show. And I, uh, yeah, they do. I was like, what the hell? They don't have two pentagraphs. They do. So they were in, like, the one centralized spot. So one's up, one's down. But the, the springs there look pretty good. The, uh, the hinges, the little pneumatic bits and all that. Like, all this looks... You know, fairly decent. It probably doesn't look as good as, like, some third-party devs electric locomotives, you know, that you can get on some crazy website somewhere for train sim. But they look, you know, they look they look pretty good overall. The livery looks okay. Um, numbers are fairly sharp. The, uh, the logo looks good and on point. Now, the coloring, I don't know. It's, uh... I don't know. It looks a little bit off, but again, it could be my settings. I'm always struggling with my Railworks and Answer to try and get it to a, a place where I where I like the way things to look. Um, but anyway, let's look at these bulbs up here. Yeah, they look okay. They're not the, the super duper best. It's these markers look all right. Got that old school look. You got the, the flashers up here. The rotating doodads air conditioning unit as well 
Some nice venting and meshing. Yeah, looks looks okay. Um, model wise. So what do you say we uh, we hop in one of these here and try the whole cold and dark? There is a manual. All right. It is now very quiet, so inside voices, please. Don't want to piss off the librarian. Um, so it does come with a manual, and it's it's got that neat look like, you know, it's a it's it's the real deal, you know, kind of like uh, what you see from say Searchlight, for example, with their uh, SD forty dash two manuals. Uh, but I'm gonna go straight to the bottom and look at the credits. So it would appear. Um, that he finishes in September 22. Uh, let's see. Amtrak for the artwork support. Gary Dolezal for the career scenario creation. Uh, Ricardo Rivera, who is uh, Repo. That's double R. That's, that's Repo. That's the man himself. I'm sorry, Abby, my dog. I just raspberried and she's not happy now. Um, so, Repo obviously did the Rolling Stock models, audio implementation, setup, scripting, all that good stuff. Uh, it tells you about the scenarios, and I would have the manual on the screen right now, but I'm going to need it to try and fire this thing up cold and dark, because he did the E33, which is probably one of my most favorite electrics that, uh, that you can get off the Steam store, and probably the only like decent freight electric for, uh, for North American stuff, as, as far as I can recall, but... Uh, Okay, so we'll, we'll have a look around here first. The cab looks pretty good. The cab looks pretty good. I mean, is it, um, is it some of the, the top tier quality, like the really good, you know, single malt top shelf stuff? No, you know, but not everything can be. That's, that's why the top tier stuff is top tier, you know. Uh, it's it's nice what devs try and and try to try to build off of what they've done and continue their, you know, up in their game and whatnot. But it still looks pretty darn good in here if you compare this to a lot of the other stuff from Train Some Classic for North American content especially. Yeah, this looks pretty good in here. Um, you know, everything's still a little bit blocky. The the shading's kind of weird. Um, uh, I believe that's AO, like the, the shading on little little 3D bits. Um, it you know some some parts it seems okay, like between the cabinet here and the firewall back here. Um, roof looks okay. It's got the weird like little little vented holes up there. Um, it doesn't actually look 3D. It doesn't have that that quite 3D look, but uh, it looks okay. Let's see if we can open the windows. You can. Can you only do one? Uno window. Can you really only? Oh, you rolled them both forward, I guess. So all you can do is move the the front one forward. So you've got a little latch on there too, a little latch key. Very cool. Okay, let's see what else can we look at here. So brake stand. Uh, right off the bat, they're not hot dogs. So plus one for that. They look uh, they look pretty good. They're a little little squarey. Um, you know, I feel like could have been a a little bit more rounded. The the loco or independent down here looks okay. Um, let's see. Can you actually change the uh, the knob there? No, you can't. Uh, the plate back there looks okay. I'm not seeing any kind of like uh, official bits scripted in there uh, on the plate. I th think there is on a lot of these. Um, the control stand looks good. It's scuffed and scratched. It's got the uh, the GE look with the uh, the handle bits being blue. Uh, it, yeah, it looks okay. It honestly looks okay. I I'm I'm totally fine with this personally right now. Um, see, we got a light that says brake applied. What else can we look at here? His hoses look all good. A little scooch over here. So you've got a back wall view because you're gonna need to be doing this stuff to fire the thing up cold and dark, which we're gonna do here in a moment. I'm assuming this is the heatar because it gets very cold up in the north. I wouldn't know anything about that. Here it is, December, and it's 85 every day uh, where I live. So, yep, sad. Um, but, yeah, the cab's big. There's a lot of weathering up here on this sill, which looks pretty nice. You can actually see the flathead screws in the panel there. I mean, overall, I don't think it looks that bad. you got your... Uh, 
your ATC signaling up here and whatnot. Ah, I mean, I've never really seen the inside of one of these. It's you, you can't find a whole lot of material about these online, honestly. I'm sure there's some stuff out there, but it's not like, uh, you know, if you looked up like a GP38-2, for example, you would just have a, a friggin' plethora of stuff you could look at. So, you know, making one of these might be difficult, so I'll... You know, I'll I'll try to keep that in mind with with the rest of the look of the thing. I think you can move the uh, the shades there. What about the dough? Can you open a dough? I don't think you can open a dough. All right, manual time. Let's see. Startup procedure steps for cold and dark units. Okay, turn on the battery. Switch in the left back panel. Battery. Battery. Here it is. Hear a little hum? I don't know if you can hear it. I'll turn the sound up a little bit. And turn it down as needed. Um, it was almost instantaneous. I feel like there should be a little delay there. But, you know, again, it's fine and stuff for these uh, you know i don't know i don't make this stuff um let's see turn on the blower breaker in the right back panel blower blower hardly even know her all right um okay just trying to listen to that for a minute It sounds kind of crunchy. Uh, you know, you can find plenty of videos of these things working that coal route out in Arizona. Because they still do to this day, uh, I think. Um, and they definitely sound more chunk than this. It's kind of a thin sound. Anyway, let's, let's keep it rolling here. It says turn on the local controller breaker on the left. Local control is right chunk. Uh, turn on the train line control breaker on the left. Train line control, right chunk. Headlight breaker, right there. Uh, running light breaker in the left back panel. Running light, running light, running light. Ah, right here. There we go. Okay. And be sure the motor cutout knob is on both trucks in position. Well, where the hell is that at? Oh, right here. Motor cutout. Both trucks in. F and R, front and rear. Okay. GG. Giggity, giggity. Um, select the desired exterior and interior lights in right back panel. Well, hell, we'll turn them all on. Um, oh, here they are. Front class, rear class, front number, rear number, cab light, walkway. Relay, EP brake, rear panto, front panto. Wait, those aren't lights. <laughs> Wait, are those lights? I don't want to mess this up. Jesus. Uh, select the desired panto. Yep. We'll do. We'll go with the front one. Uh, turn on the norm panto down switch in the main stand. Norm panto down. Norm. stand all right hold on I think he's got a uh, a diagram here let's see uh, number 18 norm panto down okay so it's like over here all right there we go so it's right there all right let me scroll on back down here turn on the norm panto down switch on the main stand okay buy him to raise the panto, push the panto raise button during a few seconds. It says during, I'm assuming it means for a few seconds. Uh, where's the raise panto thing? To raise panto, push the panto raise button. 
I think I saw it down here. Here it is. Okay. So we'll go outside. Ugh. Those exterior sounds are not very good. Man. You can hear a loop as well. It sounds like, uh, it sounds like forks scraping on a metallic surface or something and it's going, you know, it's got a repetitive loop to it. The inside sounds better because you don't hear that outside like you do inside or vice versa. Yeah, this, wow, okay. We're not done yet though. All right, so the pano is down. There's the whole purpose of looking outside here. And we'll pop this sucker on, see what happens. I heard it connect. And she's up. Alright, so we should just about be ready to go here. So it says, uh, be sure the line indicator light is on. Line indicator light. Ah, yep, right there. Right there. Okay. Let's see. Select direction with reverser. Okay. Forward. Release brakes and apply throttle. Is that easy? Okay, that's that's pretty easy. This uh, this ain't got nothing on the E33. I mean, the E33 is easy once you learn it, but it seemed a little more archaic and yeah, I don't know, but. Uh, Okay, let's listen to that reverse sound again. Ah, not, not the greatest in the world, but you know it'll. Like I said, it can't it can't really be a possibility recording these things in real time. I mean, it could be you know never say never blah 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 but the access has got to be fairly tough uh let's see we'll turn all the headlights on here dim strobe light on see what the sand sounds like can't hear it uh let's see what do we got here cab light turn that on see what it looks like instrument light number light class light then never break cut out we'll leave that in uh can't reach up there put the headlights on dim wipers OG wiper sound from other train sim stuff they don't really stick they seem very fluid um, but I don't really like operating in the rain anyway so I can really care about that lights are you know still a little funky it's 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 on par for repo stuff. The number boards look pretty good, though. I uh, I like the number boards. I, I think his older stuff didn't look that great, if I kind of remember. But, uh, they, you know, they look pretty nice. Now, we did turn on the strobes, yeah? Edonde est el strobo. Yeah, strobe lights are on. So... They're not strobing? Strobe the hobo? Alright, uh, we'll do bright. Maybe bright will do it. Yeah, there's... Still not doing anything, really. No strobage. Okay. Uh, lighting in here looks okay, again. Um... You know, for like for like the average release on the Steam store for North American stuff, uh, it's you know, it's stuff is definitely in in the upper region of, of good stuff. Um, you know, for, for devs that constantly release on the Steam store, uh, if you will. Um, you know, stuff looks okay. These look like the same kind of gauges in the E thirty three. You can see the actual wound uh, copper back there on the needles. That's cool. I like the way those look. Now the texture around that whole box up there doesn't look that great, but uh, air conditioner will only work in operating cab. Trying to save that power. All right, let's see what the brake sounds like. If 
very thin. There's no kind of clunk to it. And I'm not hearing any air. No air at all. The train brake here. That actually sounds okay. Um, have I heard that before? Somewhere. You can hear the uh, the release on that. That sounds fairly decent. We'll dump it. Oh wait, I've been dumping it. <laughs> Dingus mode. Oh, so th so the handle sounds good. That might be a new sound, but the actual release, that's uh, that's from one of his older uh, add-ons. It's got that like crunchy air sound. It sounds like sounds like smashing a champagne glass wrapped in a towel or something. It's got a it's got a funky sound to it. Uh, we're reading 90 psi, so it looks giggity there. Um, Seat's crusty. Uh, I would definitely not wear your best pants operating this thing. Um, you know, the, the fabric could be better. It's it's not top tier stuff, but it looks okay. It looks pretty good. Um, I mean, overall, it's it's very decent. Uh, it's not terrible so far. It's very decent. Um, let's see if we got any radio sound going on. Yeah. Negative. See, that's one thing like Diesel Workshop added, it's a little radio chatter. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, the guys at uh, UTS that did the F40 enhancement pack are working on that for the coaster set as well. Uh, you know, it's just a neat, neat little thing to have, if, if I'm honest. Um, let's see if there's any kind of occlusion with the sound window open closed. Does not sound like it does not sound like it. All right, so now let us take ourselves into one of the scenarios that come with it and we'll try and run this thing with the cars and that'll give us a chance to look at the cars themselves. All righty, ready, writing stuff. Okay, I've loaded a scenario up. This is for, of course, New York, New Haven because uh, if you didn't catch it before, you get two scenarios, New York, New Haven, one cold and dark, one running. And you get two for the uh, the coastline route uh, for New Jersey. Uh, um, I'm not going to do this whole thing. We're just going to, you know, test the thing out, see what she feels like, see what she sounds like, all that good stuff. Not even going to pay attention to that, although I should. Let's double check our line here, make sure. Uh, what are we starting out in Stamford here? Stamtown, headed towards New York. All right, this one is running. Let's head to the back wall and double check a some stuff. Yep, 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 yep. Radio, we're going to turn that on. We're going to try and use the safety equipment here. Both trucks are on. Single unit. Rear panto. Blah, blah, blah. All the lights appear on. Alerter on. ATC on. Front end. Comer. What is that? Rear end. Camera. Oh, camera. Camera? Yeah, what the hell. Low heat, uh, circuit breaker, trans oil pump breaker. Are those on? What the hell? Oh, this started running. Let's look outside. We are in the AM trash. What's this? Three phase three. Yeah, I should know my AM tracks better than that, but I don't. Um. Yeah, looks all right. Look at it right. It's a big old sucker, man. Thing's a brick. It's a cool locomotive, though. All right, let's see. Got her in gear. Cab light, instrument lights. Get those instrument lights on. Number lights on. Class lights. Say. Front headlight. You know what? Let's look at that. Let's look at the different uh, headlight settings. So that's medium. That's dim. And that's. Right. They look the same. Alright, what else? Um, 
Rear headlight off, obviously. Strobe. Well, now it works. Wait a minute, we don't have a freaking pano up. So, uh, I'm sorry for photosensitive viewers. Uh, I didn't even think about that. Uh, my apologies if you are. Look away, I'll turn it off just a minute. It doesn't look like the, the bulbs actually blink. Uh, it looks like it's just like a outer effect, which is very not pleasant. So I'm going to leave that off. So let's go ahead and raise the panto. I thought when it started running, like, you're good to go. Let's see here. Is it oop? No. Uh, what, oh, we had to hit this right on panto down. Let's try it now. Should be able to hear it. There we go. Line button came on. All right, so we're laughing now. Um, let's go. Literally sounds like we're outside. Okay, the power's weird. Let me pull that back off here. It uh, it's doing that thing that I'm not super crazy about, where it, it's already moving, it's already applying amperage or power or whatever as soon as you touch the button. Like there's no gradual build. You know, like something like this would have naturally. So that's like notch one, for example, it's 65 amps. We'll give it another. And yeah, see, as soon as you hit the button, it's like, Nying! it's two, three, four. Yeah, it, it doesn't build. It doesn't have like a, a gradual build to it. That's a bit of a shame. All right, what do we got here? That's clear. That's clear. All right, so we should have an alerter sound, hopefully. Traction motor? It sounds okay. The fan sound... It doesn't sound the greatest. The... The bogey sounds aren't the greatest. Uh, I don't know. I think he reused those sounds as well. The sounds sound very familiar. And not alert. Uh, didn't this thing have the... Here it is again. Didn't this thing have the... Um, what was it? Like the AEM-7, the toaster. It had like a... Like a like a U-boat alarm. Like surfacing, dive or whatever. Or did it? Get outside here. It sounds very quiet. The fans aren't super loud. They don't really have like that thickness to them because these things are freaking loud. Um, and I'm not really hearing traction motors now. You could hear the traction motors at low speed, which sounded okay, but when these things get up to speed, thanks for stopping um, for my monologue, um, you know, you can hear that whine. Absolutely. Uh, it says there's delayed train ahead. They expect restricting signals. All right, we'll see what happens here. Oh, the horn. Shit, son. Okay. Um, I wasn't expecting that. 
It sounds okay. Uh, you know, it it probably doesn't have that uh, that compression, if you will, of, of like some of the really good stuff. But the the sample itself is good. I'm not really hearing any cracking or looping or any weird stuff like that. It's, it sounds pretty decent. It's a lot better than I thought it was gonna sound. <laughs> That kind of does like a weird laser effect. Yeah. I don't know if you can pick that up or not, but overall it sounds okay. Do like a Doppler distance test. Yes, we got e-brake by the way because I suck. Look at them New York New Haven graphics, son. God, we desperately need some new uh, passenger routes that are good. Yeah, so you can't hear it back here. Real life, you definitely hear that some bitch back here. All right. I am hearing a weird thing now at the end. This just genuinely sounds okay. Let's check that bell. Bell sounds good. Shawnee like a the bell. Wait a minute. So you get a weird, like, double bell bug if you're outside and then go inside. Sounds alright! Oh wait, there is sound occlusion! Hells bells! Alright! Um, the run sounds weren't that great. Uh, they just don't have any kind of depth to them or clearness or detail. Um, technical words, don't know them. Just, you know, spitball with, you know, what's in the crazy cobweb riddled brain of mine. Um, yeah, they don't sound that great. The brake sounds are okay, but they're still kind of thin, and I feel like the, the squeal of the e-brake stop was kind of after we had stopped. But uh, let's get on back in them coaches. All right, the Amflits. Very quiet, not hearing any kind of HVAC sound at all. But shit, man, these look pretty good. Look at that roof. I feel like I'm in a freaking airliner, like in real life. This is that looks all right. I mean, like I'm I'm talking sh the lighting looks kind of weird, but strictly like model and detailing, that looks all right, man. Got your little lights up here, little light switch. That'd be cool if you could pop it. You can't pop it. Um, oh, look at the carpet. Carpet looks good. Let's see where all we can move here from just side to side. Yeah, it's very quiet in here. Of course, we are not moving, but you would still hear some bit of HVAC, electrical hum, you know, whatevs. All right, so that's your regular coach. This looks, looks pretty good in here, man. I need to hook up a loco and look at that's what that's what I'm gonna try and do. I'll try and do that. Um, hook it up to the uh, the old ones and and compare what those look like. All right, let's go back to we have a cafeteria. Look at that! Look at that! Happy meals! Happy meals for everybody! So this is the these things. Uh, the original Amfleets had like you know, big ass kitchens and dining rooms in them. And then they went to like, you know, cafe light or whatever the hell. Um, but it looks pretty good in here too. Look at this. Look at dude. Look at this metal sheeting down here. That looks very 
tri-dimensional. The, uh, the little venting holes down there. That looks pretty damn good, man. I feel like he... I feel like he had a little bit more of a... A love for these Amfleets than the E60, if I'm completely honest, uh, when making them. Hell, even the little bezels around the lights up top. The light color looks pretty good, if I'm honest. Um... counter looks a little whack but uh let's see all this over here i'm assuming this is like stainless steel type stuff got a little microwave it's 112 in the afternoon got your numbered cabinets microwave over there cafe menu breakfast specialties dan and greek yogurt copyright strike bagel with cream cheese sara lee muffin copyright strike sara lee cinnamon roll copyright strike Donut Holes, Fruit Granola Yogurt Parfait, Jimmy Dean Breakfast Sandwich, Copyright Strike, uh, Snacks and Desserts, Frito-Lay Chips or Pretzels, Copyright Strike, Planters Peanuts, Copyright Strike, Candies, Sabra Hummus with Pretzel Chips, Copyright Strike, Fruit Nut and Mix, uh, Cheese and Cracker Tray, uh, Alcoholic Beverages, Alcohol, uh, Liquor, Margarita cocktail, spirits, beer, special domestic import, regional craft, single serving, half bottle. Uh, they got a whole dang other menu over here. Let's see. Can I move? No. Nah. Yeah, we got to stay right here then. Okay. Uh, cold sandwiches. I love me a turkey sandwich. Tempting turkey. Italian. Hot sandwiches. Hebrew national. All beef hot dog. Copyright strike. Vegan burger. Angus cheeseburger. Specialty sandwich. Uh, hot snacks and pizza cup of noodles. Now, that one's vague. We know that there's, you know, cup of noodles. But that one's, that one's kind of vague. I don't know about a strike on that one. Uh, boneless buffalo chicken tenders. DiGiorno pizza. Copyright strike. Uh, milk 2% coffee tea or hot chocolate. Pepsi soft drinks. Copyright strike. Bottled water. Lipton Iced Tea, copyright Tropicana, copyright Starbucks, copyright Gatorade, copyright Children's Activity Book, Earbuds, Playing Cards, Passenger Comfort Kit, Souvenir Blanket. All right, this has got copyright strike riddled all over it. I'm pretty sure you can't have that kind of stuff. What do I know? Um, you know, I don't know how that all works. Uh, what I do know is I'm going to try and unpack this and save it so it can't be patched over at a later date. Because what the hell, I want my menu to say DiGiorno. Okay. But uh, the little pictures are cool. Coffee machine. Damn, look at this register, dude. This is next level. It looks pretty nice. Little coffee maker over there. It looks pretty good. So this is a little, little dinette. And again, these damn big dams. Fontana dams. This looks all right. Let's go outside here. Or oh, wait, is that the last? Yeah, it's probably the last car we can get in there. Yeah, it just coaches in the sleep or not the sleep, 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 sleeper. Idiot sleeper. Chair car, coach. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Yeah, they look pretty good. I'm I'm kind of excited, if you can't tell by my ultra cringy douchiness uh, as of the last couple of minutes. These Amfleets are pretty dang nice, man. Hell, I'd say this... I know, I, you know, a lot of people might wince at the sound of it, but those alone might be worth... Twenty dollar, because pe people are gonna go ape shit with these things. That's a promise. All these little hey, I live there. Northeast corridor foamers, they're gonna go ape shit bananas with these things. I mean, why wouldn't you? I don't even care about northeast corridor passenger stuff that much, and I am. Um, they look good. They look really good. All right, let's go look at the new Joyzy one. <laughs> man I uh well you can tell I haven't been on this route in a while because that skybox is something else that is and something else there this is one of the uh, NJT scenarios here um why is what's all this red 
stuff. That's just the coaches. So these obviously are not going to pull the Am fleets because it's in Jay Tizzle and not Amtrak. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of red going on here. That's funky. I don't know if it's part of the loco or it's like doing the weird thing to my eyes. Yeah, I don't like that. We're not going to worry about those coaches. Not going to worry about them. But uh, the NJT locomotive. Um, again, looks pretty good. Got a frame around the window there. The rusting along the side on this rail. I think the color looks on par. I feel like the color for the NJT stuff looks better than the uh, the the Amtrash stuff. Um, the 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 Joyzy Tricolore looks. Uh, I don't know. It just looks more normal to my eye than the colors on the, the Amtrak variant. Logo looks good. Got the in jizzle. Um, those run sounds are not very spicy though. Owned by a secured party under a security agreement filed under the Interstate Commerce Act, Section 20C. Um, but yeah, we'll just get inside here. Look around. Uh, it looks pretty identical, as far as I can tell. Let's see if they change the horn over to Joyzy. Nopers. Same horn. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's just got a, a jersey livery on it. All right, let's compare them uh, them man fleet cans real quick. All right, we are back in Washington, D.C. They look the same, but one is not like the other. There's also a, uh, a colored bed on the coupler handle there. I just noticed with the uh, NJT. I'm sure there's little bits and bobs that are different, but uh, yeah. That's, that's neat. Um, so, yeah, the NJT one over there has them OG boys. And uh, we'll hop in this real quick just to give you an idea, a quick refresher. So here's the cafe car, right? Go back outside. Get in the NJT. Does this one even have a, a cafe car view? Did it? No, it doesn't. It don't. It ain't even got no cafe car view. That's all right though. Um, it seems so cramped on these. Now, yes, one's what phase three. The other, this is phase four here. Um, but this one seems super cramped. Is this? Aren't they all just coach and business class now? Isn't that how they work? Uh, but just you, you can't even really look around. But just look at the general vicinity of uh, of this. And then we'll go back over. And uh, get in here. Yeah. Look at that. Dude, this is nice. This, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, one should expect to see in this age in which we live in. It's 2022. It's not 2012 anymore. So a lot of these devs... Uh, they keep releasing the same stuff over and over again with literally a new coat of paint and not even a good coat of paint. It's just unacceptable. And, you know, a lot of people aren't happy with it. Sure, there's some out there that are. That's great. You do you. You go buy it. That's totally fine. But this, this is the stuff that we ought to be seeing. You know, in, in my very most humblest of opinions and mediocre opinions. This is the kind of stuff we should see. These things look great. Great model. I mean, this is a pretty decent pack. Uh, I was excited when I first heard about it. I was a bit held back, you know. Didn't want to get my hopes too high as with a lot of stuff. Um, you know, the Loco... The models look okay. The, the the texturing I feel like is is high mid, um, you know, but still looks pretty decent by the standards of crap that's released on the Steam Store for North American content on the reg. Uh, this looks way better than that kind of stuff, hands down. Um, 
just noticed uh, too the uh, Amtrak's got an AC unit and the uh, they must have built them inside on the NJT either that or New Jersey doesn't have AC um, poor, poor Jerseyans um, but yeah sidetracked model looks pretty good interior looks pretty good that's a pretty cool horn the bell sounds good uh, physics you know, there just needs to be a delay in physics. I don't know if they need more weight. I, I don't know how all that works. I know people have modded things to bypass crappy physics by making the drag coefficient a little heavier on certain stuff to make it, you know, feel like you're actually operating something like this. Because this, this, this is, like, very close to that crap that Travel by Train does where, like, you're not even in a notch yet. And the thing is already, like, lifting off the ground like a freaking drag car. You know, it's just, it it needs a little transition there to, to build the amps and, and get up to speed, if you will. So the physics are kind of wonk. Uh, the run sounds... Exterior, not good. I don't think they're good at all. Interior, they sound okay uh, till you get to speed, and then they're kind of washed out by the weird bogey sounds, and you don't hear the traction motors anymore, and the fans just don't have that, you know, just loud depth to them i don't know but uh the barrels the am cans am trash am fleets it's pretty nice cars i'm i'm shocked with these i am genuinely shocked with these i mean hell just side by side man look at that like gunmetal gray on the right with zero depth and fairly realistic right here in front of us it's uh did I say left on those? I don't know. Yeah, I think I think almost alone. Um, you know, for the for the barrels, uh, it's probably worth it. Sure, sale, absolutely, hell yeah. You know, especially if you're into stuff like this. And of course, the light flares look a little whack. Um, you know, but if this thing had slightly better traction motor sounds and fans, and and some new lighting and and you know maybe the drag coefficient changed, it just felt heavier like they took time to get up to speed and you know get moving instead of that weird lurching thing you know we'd be laughing this is pretty decent stuff and uh, on that note i'm gonna leave you to it thanks for watching and listening to the babble thon uh, i'll catch you next time take care guys see you later